For me to sit here and say that the Xbox One lost that generation of consoles to the PlayStation 4, well that's an understatement. And partially, or well mainly due, to the lack of exclusives on the Xbox One. However, the Xbox One did have its bright spots. The Halo Master Chief Collection, Gears of War 5, Gears of War 4, it had the Forza series. And then, well, it had, it, it had, it's, oh, but the other exclusive it did have was Sunset Overdrive. Now, last year, my good buddy Tiger Chainsaw linked to his channel down below as well as the video. He sent me a box full of video games with Sunset Overdrive being one of them. Now, you know how we review games around here. Will Sunset Overdrive be a success and survive the saw or will Sunset Overdrive meet the sunset? Stay tuned. Released in October of 2014, Sunset Overdrive was released well with mixed feelings. While the majority of Xbox One players were excited to get any kind of new Xbox exclusive, honestly, because the PlayStation 4 was just doing so well and I was having so much fun with it, I honestly did not care to give Sunset Overdrive a look. And so did many people. Now, over the years, over all the patches, Sunset Overdrive really has taken in a cult following, so to speak. Sunset Overdrive has a campaign that you can beat, well, in about 12 to 15 hours. It also has a multiplayer mode, which, again, just adds a ton of replay value if you enjoy playing the game. Basically, Sunset Overdrive, in a nutshell, is, well, a bunch of people drink a ton of energy drinks, like I do, and they all turn into infected, with a few people having to basically kill them and just try to escape the city. That's it. That's the plot. And honestly, that's all you need. There's no reason to overcomplicate what this is. You're just trying to escape the city. There's no elaborate plot twist. Spoilers. There's no nothing crazy or fancy. It is what it is. And I think that something with this game is kind of a breath of fresh air in a gaming community right now where everything is all about open world. Don't get me wrong, Sunset Overdrive is an open world game or it has open world activities. However, it's very easy just to stick to the plot and move through the game. Jumping straight into the graphics as we do. And well, Sunset Overdrive has an amazing art style. The graphics are beautiful. The world is beautiful. There's a ton of infected and there's a ton of different character models for them and a ton of different bosses and bad guys. And again, there's so much customization for your character that your character is never going to look the same. The graphics here definitely shine through and are one of the finest points of this game. Very reminiscent to me of Jet Set Radio. And again, that kind of goes on with the gameplay and the mechanics. However, again, the game is beautiful. The art style, the graphics, they pop. Uh, it's truly a beautiful and gorgeous looking game. And it definitely shows off the power of the Xbox One. And the graphics really carry this punk style kind of theme, which really is just awesome and cool. And that goes right into the sound of the game, that there's this punk kind of rock kind of music and, and theme set throughout the game that it just makes it fun to continue to play the game. You get the music going, you get the controls, and you get the graphics going, and overall the sound just elevates and adds to how amazing the graphics already look. It just pops it even more. It makes it look even better. The sound just adds so much quality to the game. And now on to my favorite and the most important review categories for me and that is the controls and the gameplay and well let me be honest about the controls this is pretty much Tony Hawk but with guns and it has a very 
Spider-Man like swinging technique to it. And I'll be honest, the first several hours of the game with the controls, I definitely struggled. Some of the button combinations, some of the ways you have to parkour and grind, they can be a little challenging. They can be a little frustrating to get every kind of button combination hit just right. Because essentially, going into the gameplay, it's a pretty much non-stop grind and parkour session where you have to shoot and kill all the infected while doing and completing several different missions and objectives. But again, personally, the controls took me probably five or six hours to get used to, and that's on me. I just probably kind of suck because I think I initially beat the game in about 15 hours so I spent a little over a quarter of it just learning the controls but by the time I got the controls down I was grinding and jumping and swinging and killing everything in sight very easily and was just amazing time doing so that's something that once you learn the controls and once you really understand the gameplay mechanics the game just becomes a blast no pun intended to play but there's also this great mix of gameplay that helps just keep the game fresh whether you're just grinding around trying to get to the different vats to increase everything and grinding and shooting enemies to then other sequences where there's a first person mode and you're again first person just taking out infected there's a lot of different aspects and a lot of different game mechanics that they try to push and try to use that really make the game feel fresh. Again, I'm talking about grinding and it being Tony Hawk with guns. Let me be clear here. It's not completely 100% Tony Hawk with guns. That is a big aspect of it, but they did a fantastic job at incorporating several other game missions and aspects that just keep the game feeling fresh. The game never really does feel still. Overall, my time with the gameplay here and the controls, I had a great time. And I think it's something that, again, once you figure everything out, you're going to have a great time with it as well. But now that I've said all of this positive, amazing stuff, let me go ahead and focus on some negatives here. One of them being, honestly, again, I said that this game was about 15 hours long, and it is, and it can definitely be much longer if you decide to go after all of the collectibles and do all of the different side missions. However, it did feel like this game just drug on a couple of missions too long. For me, this game basically, the campaign is a giant fetch quest. But again, with all of the different game mechanics, it wasn't a bad thing, but I felt like it did drag on just a couple of missions too far. I think it could have done without the last couple and wrapped it up sooner and just still have been an amazing game. Another negative that I have to bring up, which I think turned a lot of people off from the interactions I've had with people on Twitter and within the gaming community, is the tutorial. The tutorial was entirely too long. You know, it's, there's nothing necessarily wrong with a game holding your hand and kind of getting you up to speed, but sometimes there's some tutorials that are just overkill. And this is definitely one of them. Now, I understand that they're trying to do the very best they can to help get you acclimated to the controls, but it drags on way too long. And so I think that turns off a lot of players that were really ready just to jump into the action and start really grinding through missions. Closing out and wrapping up this review here, my final thoughts on this game is honestly, Sunset Overdrive does not give a what your religious views, what your political stances are, this game does not give a I mean, you're playing levels where you're saving LARPers, and you're not only saving LARPers, but you're cooking pigeons to feed to people. You're saving a guy that was kidnapped, and once you find where he's at, he's got no legs and no arms, Lieutenant Dan style. Well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. Yes, I know that. Like, I am so legitimately impressed that this game just does its own thing. It's silly, it's over the top, it's crazy, it's wonky, and when I say that it does not give a 
I mean it. Now I'm a huge Gears of War fan and I really like the Halo Master Chief Collection but I will say though that Sunset Overdrive is the best Xbox exclusive on the Xbox One. Now is it a masterpiece? Not by any means but it's a game that if you're an Xbox owner you have to own this game and even if not and you find a chance and you get a chance to play this game Sunset Overdrive is a must play game. It's a great game with great mechanics, great controls, a simple and amazing storyline that's just simple and straight to the point. And again, as I've said multiple times now, when I say the game does not give a it has zero foxes to give. As always, thank you all for watching. Click the bell, click the subscribe button, Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the review, but more importantly, let me know what you think about Sunset Overdrive. As always, take care, be good, and we will see you all next time.